At CES 2022, AMD this year had a lot to show off. I'd say this year's keynote was much more exciting than last year's. However, if there's one product that intrigued me, but not necessarily in a good way, it was the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. A strange product which makes you question, who's actually going to be buying the CPU, or rather, who's it for exactly? Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Earlier this year, CES 2022 had kicked off and all of your favorite and big consumer electronics brands showed off new products they'll be bringing to the market later this year. AMD was amongst one of the companies that had a lot to show off and I'll be making some videos where I'll be talking about products that interested me or at least that's the goal. I'm just finding with all the limited time I haven't been able to post much. Anyways, for this video, I wanted to focus on the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. A new Ryzen 5000 SKU which is utilizing AMD's 3D vCache technology which they demoed last year at Computex 2021. Let's quickly recap what they had showed us from Computex 2021. After establishing chiplet designs, Lisa Su mentioned that their next step was to bring 3D chiplet technology to the hands of consumers. Working closely with TSMC, they were able to use their fabric designs to achieve the ability to stack multiple dies on each other. The first application of this was to stack a 7nm 64MB SRAM to a Ryzen CCD, essentially tripling the amount of shared L3 cache available to the Zen 3 cores. One of the major reasons as to what prompted AMD to seek out this design is because a lot of games, especially many modern games, benefit from this large pool of cache and lower latency. The prototype they showed off last year was a modified version of their Ryzen 9 5900X which had a vCache die stacked on one of its CCDs. This resulted in AMD attaining a up to 25% improvement in the games they showed. Results that you'd expect from a new generation of CPUs. Fast forward half a year to CES 2022, and we've got our first production model, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Essentially, it's a 5800X with the 3D vCache stacked on top of its CCD. What's interesting to note is that the clock speeds on this model when compared to the original 5800X are actually quite a bit lower. Looking at the specs of the 5800X, it has a base clock of 3.8 GHz and a boost clock of 4.7 GHz, although it would boost a bit higher than that, even at stock since the numbers I find are a bit conservative. So in games where they don't necessarily benefit from a large amount of cash, there would actually probably be a reduction in performance due to the lower clock speeds. At first, I was a bit surprised by this. I assumed that since the 7 nanometer process is so mature, resulting in higher quality yields or samples, this would have led to higher boost figures. But I'm thinking that because there's a whole other die stacked on top of the CCD, it results in higher temps. So AMD had to scale back the clock speeds to keep this chip in check. And as you all know from my previous video and the review of the 5800X, it already ran pretty hot to begin with. When it comes to performance, we'll obviously have to wait and see until it's in the hands of reviewers to validate AMD's claims, but what are they claiming here? Well, in the majority of titles when compared to the 5900X, which is already a pretty darn fast gaming CPU, AMD showed off double digit percentage games. There was one exception and that was CSGO, which is a pretty old title and really just utilizes one thread on an ancient engine. But you can see that most of the other titles are fairly modern which have come out in the last 3 or 4 years and benefit from the larger amount of cash available. So some more than others. Compared to the 12900K, which is currently the best CPU, although not by a lot, AMD says now that they have the fastest gaming CPU, but it's really nothing to write home about. And again, they really only showed off a handful of games here, whereas most reviewers would be testing a wide variety of games from various genres, engines, or APIs, and then we'll see who's actually on top. I think what will happen is that gaming performance between this CPU and the 12th gen Alder Lake parts will be pretty much a wash, which unfortunately isn't going to be anything too exciting as current benchmarks of Alder Lake would show that it's not even that much faster than a Ryzen 5000 part, and that's at 1080p, whereas now with affordable 1440p monitors and people jumping on 4K displays or TVs, those differences will be negligible. Lisa Su did say that the CPU will be available in spring of this year, which probably threw off most people since we were all expecting a much earlier release date, say later in January or early February. Though with everything that's currently going on in the world, you can't really be too surprised, can you? 
We also don't know the price since they never officially announced anything. AMD probably wants to wait a bit and see how the CPU market is in terms of sales and where their competitor parts are selling in terms of pricing. If I had to take a guess, they should probably price the CPU between $350 to $399 at most. Anything beyond that and it will be a hard sell. However, I was disappointed that this is the only 3D Vcache CPU we're going to get. I mean, at CES, AMD had demoed a dual CCD Zen 3 CPU utilizing 3D stacking tech and Lisa Su herself mentioned this that since each CCD has 96 megabytes of cache this would allow for a 12 or 16 core Ryzen CPU with a whopping 192 megabytes of cache. In an actual device an individual SRAM is bonded to each CCD so you get 96 megabytes of cache per CCD or 192 megabytes total for a 12 or 16 core Ryzen processor in a single package. So I for sure thought that they would have at least launched a 5950X3D as the final top end SKU for AM4 with a giant pool of cash. It almost feels like as if this may have been the case, but they cancelled it for whatever reason and decided to just launch one SKU. Speaking of AM4, it also begs the question, who is this part really for? I know most Ryzen 5000 owners would probably skip out on this part. Those chips already deliver gaming performance, that's close enough, and Ryzen 9 owners probably wouldn't want to downgrade in a number of cores. I know I wouldn't. The majority of Zen 2 owners would probably also just wait at this point until Zen 4 comes out, and that will be until later this year or early 2023, which will be on a totally new platform supporting DDR5 and PCIe 5.0, which would make it a more substantial jump. I think this chip is perfect for those Ryzen 1000 and 2000 owners who want to upgrade to something as a stopgap for their existing motherboard before upgrading to a newer generation like Zen 4 or Zen 5 or whatever else maybe Intel might have. But AMD clearly states that it's for 400 and 500 series motherboards only. And here I think they absolutely just dropped the ball if you ask me. With the announcement of this chip, AMD could have also announced alongside it at CES 2022 that they will be expanding support for Zen 3 to 300 series boards as a final hurrah to conclude the life of AM4. I said it in my previous video and I'll say it again, but an owner of a 1700X or 1600 or even a 2700 would experience a dramatic performance uplift by jumping from Zen 1 or Zen Plus to Zen 3 especially with this 3D Vcache tech. 300 series motherboard owners would have to upgrade their motherboard right now in order to upgrade to Zen 3, but as soon as you bring up the conversation of motherboard upgrades, then this also opens the door for them to jump on Intel's platform too. With the 5800X 3D, AMD could have stated that we're looking out for our early adopters for Zen, the one who supported us from the start as a thank you. We're giving you this final opportunity to upgrade the chip in your socket to this one and experience a significant performance boost, which is why I was really hoping there would have also been a 5900X 3D or 5950X 3D. Just think about it, someone going from a Ryzen 5 1600 to a 5900X 3D. They would keep the same motherboard, same RAM, same cooler, assuming they already have something decent, and just put money towards a new chip and yeah, there you go, you experience a great performance upgrade. Especially now when everyone seems to be so tight on money, the GPUs are only getting more expensive. This is why this product baffles me, because Ryzen 5000 owners definitely aren't going to be buying the CPU, the vast majority of 3000 owners probably aren't either at this point, but then you have a small portion of 2000 series owners using 400 series motherboards who could upgrade to this chip, or depending on their needs, save money and just buy a 5800X, or sacrifice gaming performance and get a 5900X which would give them much better multi-core performance if that's what their needs uh, imply. And then you finally have 300 series motherboard owners who could have actually used and benefited from this upgrade but then can't because AMD wants to play hardball. So who's it actually for? AMD have made some pretty pointless products in the past, like the 3000 XT CPUs. I'm not saying this CPU is as bad as those but it, because it actually does use some really cool new tech, but the fact of the matter is, is that Zen 4 is not too far off in the distance and I feel like many people will overlook this CPU. We'll have to wait and see until March 2022. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.